Hello, it's Joe the CRM chap here and we're back with another video in my series all about Microsoft Exam MB400. Uh, this is the exam for developers who are looking to validate and get certified um, in their skills and, and knowledge uh, when it comes to extending either Dynamics 365 online or the Power Platform. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can use webhooks to push events out into, ex into sort of external APIs. Now webhooks are typically, you know, when you were talking about the concept of webhook, it's, it's typically like, okay, when a certain action or certain event occurs, that's what triggers a webhook. It then fires off a HTTP request and then from there, process logic from there. So we've seen previously already in the series, okay, how we can use push out events uh, into the Azure service bus. Webhooks work in a sort of similar way. It's the same sort of data that gets posted out but the setup that you do to sort of work with them is a little bit more different. So we're going to talk through the steps today, show you a very basic example, okay, how can you get, um, you know, events pushed out via a webhook um, and, you know, view and inspect um, the data that comes out of the system. So in order to help us along with this, uh, we're going to be using a tool called Request Bin. This basically just lets us um, create just a URL where we can fire off webhook requests confirm that they're working, uh, a very useful tool to use if you're doing sort of early development work and stuff like that. So first thing, so is you just need to create our request bin by clicking the button up here. And we can see that straight away we're going to get an endpoint. So this is our webhook endpoint that we're going to need to use um, and basically uh, be posting out to when certain events occur in the application. So now with that sort of created, we can jump across into our plugin registration tool. Um, we're just going to close that tab down for a second. We're going to get logged into our environment, our MB400 uh, test environment, uh, or dev environment I should say. Then once we're in here we go to the register button up here and we can see we've got an option down here for register new webhook. Um, so we can give this sort of name down here, so we'll just call this MB400 uh, demo. Our endpoint URL is the one that we've got on here, so we're just going to copy that and paste it into here. Now typically if you authenticate with any API you're going to have some sort of authentication in place whether it's sort of a you know authorization bearer a key or something like that. In this case this is a completely unauthenticated URL. Um, but if we were trying if we were to try and save this now we're going to get an error uh, because it expects there to be at least one HTTP header key value pair um, as part of the uh, registration profile. So we're just going to add in something on here. I'm just going to go uh, test uh, yeah value um, on there just so we can get this saved. So at this point we click on save and we've got our webhook set up and ready to go. Now at this point the experience is fairly similar in terms of um, you know as we've seen before in terms of when you register steps for both either a plugin or for a service endpoint. Um, so what I mean by that is you right click on the webhook, we click on register new step down here and through here we can define okay uh, uh, you know which message which entity in the application is going to trigger our webhook to fire off. So in our example today, we're just going to do uh, create again. Uh, we're going to do um, the account as our entity on there. We want to make sure this is uh, a post operation and we're going to execute this asynchronously. We don't want to block the operation. We're just going to post it out and just let the endpoint worry about consuming it further from there. So at this point, we can click on register new step and we've got our webhook set up and ready to go. So now if we were to jump across into our environment, into our um, model driven app that we've got set up, we're just going to get a new account profile set up. Uh, so we'll call this uh, ABC Company. Uh, we'll populate just a few details on here. So HTTP ABC Company dot com, uh, 123 Market Lane, a bit of postcode as well. And that should be more than enough that we need for now. So if we click on save down here. Record saves without issuing the application. But now if we were to go across back into our request bin down here, we can see we've got a post that's come through. Um, so our webhook has fired successfully. It's sent out our event and all details from that into onto our endpoint. And we can see on here that we get the whole structure on here. It's sort of nicely formatted so we can expect it further. So as we saw with the, when posting events out into the Azure service bus, as we saw when we're working with plugins, mo pretty much all of the same information is getting posted out as part of this. Um, so we get you know our business unit ID, input parameters, output parameters, uh, entity images as well. Basically everything that we do expect to work with um, from a plugin value. Um, we also get some additional details that get added on as part of the HTTP request. So we get, for example, the request ID, the entity name, 
uh, the organization that's fired it, which might be quite useful. Um, you know, so if we're working in multiple environments, we want to make sure that we're getting requests through from the right one. And at this point then, once this hits our particular endpoint, we can then process it further from there. So typically you might have, for example, let's say a, uh, an Azure function app, let's say, um, that, that can accept HTTP requests, a logic app. You would take the request that comes through, you'd then either process it from there, get it into your external system, maybe push it into a queue. Um, you know, the world's your oyster really, in terms of what you can do with it. Um, in terms of for the exam itself, you don't really need to worry about in terms of okay, what the, the what happens next bit. Really, you just need to be familiar in terms of okay, how you can get this a webhook set up, and in terms of okay, what what information do I get um, chucked out as part of that. So that wraps up for today's video. I hope this has been really useful in showing you how you can get set up and working with webhooks in Dynamics three six five. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you again if you enjoy the content. Uh, we're trying to do videos quite frequently. We've got a whole uh, series on this, different videos that help you get prepped for the MB four hundred exam, and also try and do other videos um, around that as well. Um, so it'd be really great to have you along, have you along uh, for the journey. Um, so what it leads me to say is have a great day ahead, and thank you very much.